um, that one or is it like that I feel is when I'm just kind of blurting something out and making a melody that kind of came from nowhere and so I don't feel a need to promote it and I don't feel a need to for uh, people to hear it I don't have that drive you know what I mean I'm kind of just um, the act of creation in and of itself is its own reward is sufficient enough and I really shy away from uh, like commerce uh, in terms of exchanging money for music because I'm just not a fan I feel uncomfortable it's not that I don't I don't have confidence because I do have confidence and I've kind of come to the self-realization that I am decent if not 
good enough for people to appreciate, but it really makes me uncomfortable to hand somebody a CD and then keep my hand open. You know what I mean? Just like, yeah. it just seems kind of distasteful to me. And so since I don't have that drive... Do you think um, because your music is uh, s makes you so vulnerable that has something to do with it? I mean, because it is so open and earnest about really difficult subjects, yeah. do you feel that it's that, that makes it hard to, to give it away? I think it's inconsistent with the identity that I present when I'm uh, performing, yeah. I think that, like, uh, I'm uncomfortable for that reason is because um, it is part of my overall identity, but it's kind of compartmentalized into its own thing. And it is um, the only time that I've ever... So, like, sometimes I'll go on Kickstarter or whatever, and, like, these people are begging for money, uh, and it's fucking blown my mind, and... The only time I ever went on Kickstarter is when I was trying to get money for drugs. Be like, I need two thousand dollars for it. You know, what a you created a fake campaign for? Drug I didn't. Money. I went as far as I could, and then I got like my attention goes away within five minutes, and it takes like ten minutes to set up that account. So I never actually like went through with it. But that was going to be one of my things, and uh, so I think I've always felt that way about uh, music being exchanged for money is that it doesn't really serve the purpose in terms of fueling creativity for me. And also, like, I don't need the validation that some people need and, and equate that with whatever sum of money they earn from it. So I can kind of take it or leave it. I'm pretty shy about my identity as a songwriter. I guess like I'm kind of put off by whatever happened in the digital age where everyone became a songwriter. And uh, I just didn't want to be part of that everything. I didn't want to like say, yeah, I'm a musician too. So I never really, honestly, I don't talk about it. And so I say I'm a writer because I don't feel that, I don't know, I can't read music, you know what I mean? I can't play multiple instruments, and 
the most I can do the extent of it is like some weird chords on top of A through G that I kind of make up on my own. So I'm not comfortable with calling myself a musician for that fact.
Yeah, uh, when I was 18 years old, my dad took me to Guitar Center in Saginaw. And uh, on my birthday, he said, you can buy any guitar in here that's reasonably priced, like 600 bucks, 700 bucks. And he's like, you know, go ahead and like uh, pick out whatever you want to pick out because my dad's always been really, really supportive uh, of my music. Um, and I picked that little junior Yamaha because uh, it was the cheapest guitar and I had like uh, such a bad drug addiction at the time that I knew if I got anything more expensive that I'd pawn it off. And so it was only out of the um, necessity of survival, as like you put it, that I got a guitar that I couldn't pawn off. And uh, when we were having lunch earlier and I left it in the um, restaurant or whatever, like that's uh, uncommon because that is the only my thing that I've owned throughout this entire time uh, that I've been using drugs that I've kept. And it goes with me um, to every new residence that I, uh, that I move in and I make sure that that's the first thing that I kind of put in the car. And because like I've lived probably 20 some 30 places, you know, couch surfing and subleasing and uh, transitional housing and you know, whatever. And uh, so I'm really proud of that. And I think it's uh, somewhat symbolic that the ownership that I continue to have of that guitar is really just the ownership that I continue to have of music regardless of the circumstances.
started playing music like years and years and years ago, I thought people were just being nice to me. I thought they were like, wow, they like they'd come after up to me after I performed, and they'd be like, wow, that was really great. And then they'd kind of just turn. On, I don't know if I'd just kind of like shy away because I'm usually that way about even taking compliments for it. But it happened so frequently since then, and it's been so consistent since then that I started to kind of believe it. But originally, I never thought it was. You should anything. believe it. Yeah, you yeah. Did. And I do, and not in a cocky way, but I am comfortable um, with believing in myself. And uh, that's, for me, satisfying enough in terms of this, this medium. Yeah. I, you, you were addicted to opiates for uh, 12 years, and um, I myself just went through a, a pretty rough two-year period. Um, not drugs, but um, <clears throat> mental stuff, and uh, I, I think I wonder in 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 moments, and I don't know if I'd call them clarity, what was lost because of my sickness. If um, I'm not as sharp as I otherwise would have been, I'm not as intellectually curious. Um, I'm I'm not. Uh, I lost two years of poetic development, and it's really frightening to me that that I might have numbed myself to the world as a matter of, or uh, in the name of survival, because I was too affected by things. So I had to shut down some of my awareness and some of my, I, I don't want to say wonder, but some of my um, curiosity. Do you, do you worry about that? Worry about what was lost in, in the 12 years uh, that you were using? No, I give myself a, a fair amount of leniency when it comes to like uh, in admitting that I have a have had a serious drug problem that's handicapped my progress. Yeah. I mean, it's just kind of like I know other people that feel that way, and it it saddens me because you, the, you know you kind of have to give yourself a little bit of slack, and if not, I mean that pressure or that um, worry that you've stunted yourself in some way is mostly a perception, I feel, and that, um, and I guess regardless, I'm not really trying to do anything with this anyway, so like, it's kind of, like, what does it even matter if I am stunted? If I am stunted, then that's fine. Um, I'm still able to do the thing that brings me happiness, which is just kind of build out a melody anyway. So as long as I, you know, have that about me, but I mean that's that's currently where I'm at in that journey. And years before, yeah, the first time I ever got sober, I was like, well, I can't write music anymore because I wrote all that other shit when I was uh, getting high. Uh, so I guess I'm done writing music unless I want to get high again. But I know that that's kind of getting pretty hairy. Um, but I stuck with it regardless because it brought me happiness and like I, that's where I gained a lot of my confidence in terms of being a songwriter.
Yeah. Uh, well, it was recorded technically, but it wasn't, you know, it was formal. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Uh, my girlfriend originally called me back brace. For, <laughs> that's like what uh, my name was in her phone, and that's what she called all her, uh, to me, to all her friends. <laughs> <laughs> and people were like, Mike's so confident. Because I had that fucking, like, uh, that TLSO or whatever, like the body cast. And so I'm, like, fucking like this. And they're like, Mike just has something about him where he's so confident. And I'm, like, I'm walking around like a fucking surfboard. <laughs> so. Cool. Cool. All right, I'm going to go give that guy $10 or offer to mow his lawn.